Around the country, cities and states have been reopening, and when Vegas reopened, boy did it reopen. Take a look at this video. And Francesca, you can see there, uh, I don't know which casino that is, but it's a lot of people, and so far, I haven't seen a single mask. Ugh. And you can just see going by people playing blackjack and the high limit tables over there. Yeah, I still. This I, is, is this really from now? That 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 is apparently the case. Apparently the case. In any event, it is open, and this is reflective of what people are reporting from on the ground in Vegas. Um, but it is my if if it is not, I apologize. I've been scammed by Antifa, but this this is apparently. <laughs> Is that I mean, a mask? Oh, yep. Oh, oh, we got one two mask. masks. Two masks. We got two masks. Got them. They were the Asians. I saw a friend of mine, Thank actually, you. right there. Um, and there, there might be a third mask. Uh, in one of the comments, someone said they saw three. I haven't yet. Look, I'm just going to say, in general, in Vegas, you should be covering yourself up from germs anyway, pre-pandemic. And now, I mean, look, I know that people are saying... You guys say that you care about a second wave and all these people are protesting. As you said, hand sanitizing, they're outside, and they're wearing masks. In Vegas, it is just all there. I mean, it, it, uh, casinos are not essential for the love of God, okay? Craps Can isn't all essential? Of these... What? Craps? No, it's not essential. No, dude. It's on your phone phone. Download the phone game, you dumb idiot. But I guess we have to make all of these Trumpian tycoons even more money, which they did get bailout money because casinos could apply for it, and I'm sure received it. Like, I've seen more distancing at Walmart, which is saying a lot. Like, a mm -hmm. little, a lot. I don't know. Walmart's terrible is what I'm saying. I've, like, seen more social distancing from mom and pop shops who can't afford really to social distance because they actually need the money. They want more people in, but they're following guidelines. Um, this is absolutely ridiculous. There is no comparison to protests outside. Um, and it is striking that they would not regulate something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, good and bad news here. So first, the bad news is that if you if you go to Vegas, I need you to understand that not only apparently is virtually no one wearing a mask or socially distancing, but you have every one of those people is self-selected based on their willingness to accept great risks and make perhaps poor decisions. That's so maybe all of them avoided going or canceled their trip if they felt a bit sick, but maybe they're risk takers. On the other hand, the good news is the only <laughs> people that go to casinos in Vegas are people who live in Vegas. So this isn't going to spread all over the country or anything. So that's good news. We do have that going for us. Now, I will say, um, but I'm done. I will say in terms of national, I have, I've been watching the past month or so every day, and I want to reflect both the good and the bad of what we're seeing with coronavirus. So the bad is, according to data collected by Johns Hopkins University, California is one of nearly 20 states that has seen a rising number of coronavirus cases over the last five days. So there's a good chunk. Another about 14 have been consistent over that time. They haven't been going up and they haven't been going down. Some of it is really bad news though. On Thursday, Florida reported the single biggest increase in new cases since the state has been keeping COVID-19 infection uh, records. Earlier this week, Florida had its biggest one-day spike in six weeks. Now, that's what we know. Now, Florida is one of the states that has been, you know, pulling a little bit of tricky pizzicky stuff to hide their numbers. That has become pretty common. Georgia and Texas have done that. There are a number of states that have inexplicably, inexplicably had a lot of people die of pneumonia, you know, over and above the number that normally die each year. That seems a little bit weird. Um, but understand that there are a number of states that are going up. That said... There is a bit of good news. Today, this is yesterday, states reported 453 deaths, the fewest since March 28th. And the seven-day average is under 1,000. And you can see there, if you're not on the podcast, that the numbers are trending down. So in terms of deaths, understanding that some states are clearly classifying coronavirus deaths as pneumonia deaths, which is entirely dishonest and dangerous, it does appear that while the case numbers are steady or going up, 
the death numbers apparently are going down. I want to acknowledge the bad, but I also want to acknowledge the good when it apparently is there. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, I, I've not heard a word from the federal government on the coronavirus in a while. Mm -hmm. You'd think, you know, Trump would even use sort of the argument that I think a lot of people are making one of the best arguments against these protests, which is they could spread coronavirus, even though literally everyone is wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. But we haven't because he's effectively disbanded the coronavirus task force. We don't know what's going on at all, um, which is still incredibly scary. Um, But I will say if there were ever a moment to defund the police right now and move that money into services mm-hmm. like healthcare, mental health, homelessness services, right? Um, that is the time is now. The time is during this pandemic that is devastating health and economic impacts. We can maybe we don't need the police. Hey, everyone's home. Everyone's home. We'll need we'll need de-escalation. Units will need to talk about domestic violence, but oftentimes when you have domestic violence calls and police come in, that can be a recipe for disaster, especially if you're black or brown. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm I'm sort of curious, like, yeah, the 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 organization in the federal government designed to, to talk about this. Trump apparently like forgets it even exists. Um, he doesn't care about this. I read an article that the the GOP has lost its appetite for more aid. That appetite's been gone for like two months at this point. Yeah. And by the way, it's amazing, just from a purely pragmatic political point of view, that they have free reign to inject a bunch of money into the economy to give it a boost in an election year. And they're like, no, how much do you have to hate the American people that you won't use other people's money to artificially boost your election chances? It's amazing. Um. And in terms of the police, like, I'm curious, I, this is a sort of informal poll, this will be anecdotal, but I would like people to comment, just a number, how many times have you called the police for help in your life? I will say, as a, personally, I don't believe I've ever had to. Now, obviously, that's part of a, a you know, a, a product of privilege. Some people will be exposed to more of this sort of thing than others, but like the Tucker Carlson's and the Sean Handys of the world would have you believe that if the cops were gone for one moment, bandits would rampage through your neighborhood. It's generally not the case. No. And I think the other question related to that is not only how many times have you called the police, but also how many times have the police been helpful in your lives? Yeah. How many interactions with police officers have been good? For mm-hmm. you and, you know, whatever situation you were facing. My guess is not very many. And I think the other thing is that a lot of white people have to think about, and I think Tucker Carlson and, and Sean Hannity are, are really asking a lot of white folks who are on the left and progressives and liberals, when do you call the police and why? You know, we know that when people with privilege often call the police because of what they think they're seeing or they yep. think they see someone with a gun or there's someone rifling in their trash, you know, the the nextdoor.com or right sort of snitch culture that oftentimes that can end in someone being murdered. Yeah. Because and I know that's not people's intention when they call the police and this is why we need to have disarm them, have less funding for them. And yes, I do think have more training, but the training needs to be Instead of not in addition, not more money for better training, less money for for lethal training, more money for non-lethal. Yeah. And I don't mean, you know, tear gas, or non-lethal bean bags. or beanbags. Right. And I think so everyone has to sort of think about like, yeah, when have you called? Why would you call? And are there situations where you can call someone else? And then just an anecdote. I know someone who has a business. She says she calls the fire department because she knows the fire department. I, they don't have guns. Yeah. They got hoses. And they can, but if someone is undergoing, let's say, cardiac arrest or they need immediate attention, they can also transport someone to the hospital. Um, They can help. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. We should, like many, and and John Oliver, everybody should watch his episode. He goes through this. There's so many. Say John Oliver one more time. I I swear to God, John. I know, I know. If Dan is watching, he's going to get really mad at me. Um, There are so many. Like, the expansion of police role, like, the number of things they need to stand in for that hypothetically there could be far better equipped experts that would also not respond with lethal force because, you know, it's if every problem's a, you know, a nail and, you know, you'll if you're a hammer or whatever, all the problems will be the nail, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. We could avoid a lot of that damage. Again, defund the police. 
doesn't mean you don't have police. It means that the police fill a far smaller, more targeted, and appropriate role in society, hopefully not on a foundation of law enforcement philosophy going all the way back to slave patrols. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.